After moving from my home state to a new state five hours away from my university, I felt that the area around campus was not a safe place, so I made the decision that it would be best to find an apartment nearby to save money. When I got to the place, it looked like a large mansion that had been converted into a three-story building, with a large two-story portion added to the back. I decided to move into one of the middle apartments that was on the second floor and had a parking space in the back of the building. At first, I was frustrated that I could see a distance from the other tenants, but over time, I got to know the people living in the apartment next door. They were a married couple with no children, probably 10, 12 years older than me. The property manager explained to me that the husband was the son of the former owner of the entire building, but had been in a serious car accident by accident and had since had problems thinking and perceiving the world around him. The wife was friendly and had a strong and talkative personality. They both seemed very eager to get to know me and get to know me better, which was apparently driven by their own need for companionship. As time went on, it began to seem to me that they were seeking a special connection with me, and it gave me a strange feeling. They would often sit by their door or leave it partially ajar so that they could see me when I came or went from the apartment. Our interactions could last anywhere from five minutes to an hour and a half, before they realized that I wanted to get on with things. Each time, they would invite me out for dinner or drinks, but I would graciously decline. What was even stranger was that despite their apparent friendliness, I could hear them yelling at each other. Sometimes these arguments would go on until the wee hours of the morning, preventing me from sleeping. I had to endure this for a whole year. In January, with only days left on my lease, I found a new place to live. However, during the move, her husband caught me carrying boxes. He called out to me, Hey, where are you going? I turned to face him but kept moving in the opposite direction and replied, Oh, I'm actually going to move this week. His eyes widened and he just looked at me and said, But you've never come over to my house for dinner. I didn't know what to say back except, Yes, I wish we had that opportunity. He stood half turned toward me and just stared at me. Turning around, I put the box in the car. As I drove out of the apartment complex, his eyes widened, but he only stared dumbly in my direction. After a while, I got rid of everything unnecessary and moved into the apartment, taking only the essentials with me. One night, the temperature dropped below zero. As the sun set, there was a power outage in the apartment. I couldn't get to the electric box, and when I called the person in charge of the building, he left me without an answer. I had to contact the electric company and inform them of the breakdown, after which I packed my things to spend time at my friend's parents' house. The next morning, I returned to move the last of my belongings. Noticing the electric company's truck parked in front of the house, I walked into my apartment. A worker approached me asking if I had called about an electrical problem. I confirmed my call. He laughed a little and stated, You seem to have seriously pissed someone off. I asked who he was referring to, and he explained that the electrical problem was only in my apartment. Normally, when a problem occurs, the switch is in the middle position, but in my case, it was turned all the way up, meaning someone had deliberately turned off the electricity. The switch is in the basement, and only the building manager or owner can get there. I realized that my neighbor had deliberately deprived me of power on the coldest night of the year. It wasn't worth having a conversation with him about it. I just wanted to leave the place. Gathering my things, I left without even looking back to see if he or his wife were watching me. A story about a former neighbor of mine makes my soul stand still. My wife, our dog Sparky, and I lived in a single-family home with one acre of land in a residential neighborhood. We had lived in that house for five years, but alas, our neighbor Ben has been an absolute nightmare since he moved in, which was about a year ago. He has torn up our flowers, criticized the car, and even called our house the ugliest on the block. However, his obnoxious behavior peaked when he started leaving his stuff, like an old canoe in a patio table on our property. I got sick of it and moved his stuff back into his yard, contemplating the possibility of installing a fence. 
but then a grim story happened out of the blue. Our beloved dog Sparky disappeared. We became increasingly worried, scouring the neighborhood for hours looking for him. Upon returning home, I thought I heard faint barking coming from Ben's backyard. Upon doing my own investigation, I discovered that Sparky was locked in the neighbor's shed. Unable to get him to open the door, I was forced to enlist the help of the police. Upon their arrival, Sparky was rescued and we filed charges against Ben. Although he was given a relatively light sentence along with probation, he had to leave our neighborhood. I am glad he is out of our lives and hope I never see him again. This happened in my former apartment where I lived from June 2021 until I moved in two years later. About a year after I moved in, a new tenant moved into the neighboring apartment. My apartment was on the second floor, the penultimate apartment at the end of the building. The layout was straight hallways with rooms on either side. My apartment consisted of a bedroom, one and a half bathrooms, a living room, and a kitchen. During my time living here, most of the neighbors were friendly, and I got to know many of them on the floor. The previous neighbor next to me was friendly, but the new neighbor seemed less outgoing. After a brief conversation, I rarely saw him. About six months after he moved in, I was disturbed late one night by knocks coming from the side of his wall. At first, I didn't pay attention to it, thinking it was due to renovation work. The next night, however, the noise continued and became noticeably louder. Despite this, I managed to fall asleep. The next night, I woke up in the middle of the night to sounds coming from the bathroom connected to the bedroom. The room was dark, and I couldn't make out anything. Even though I was sure I had locked the doors, I heard footsteps and grabbed my phone and keys and ran out of the apartment. I ran down the hallway, down the stairs, and finally made it to my car. I called my best friend who let me spend the night at her place. The next day, we went back to my apartment to look everything over. To my surprise, nothing scary had happened. No one was inside and nothing had been stolen. Confused and concerned, I told my friend what had happened. As we were looking around the bathroom, I noticed an oddity near the shower. After sending a picture for proof, I discovered a large closet or pantry next to the shower. Upon opening it, I saw several items that were out of place and there was a noticeable crack in the wall. On the other side of the wall was my new neighbor. It became obvious that he had made a hole in the wall to get into my apartment. Terrified, we called the police and the building administration. The neighbor admitted his actions, but his intentions remained unknown. Fortunately, I did not have to endure his presence for long before the end of the rental period, and I decided to move out because of this frightening experience. I am grateful for the timely response that evening, which allowed me to leave the apartment quickly.